What's up guys, my name is Boostreams and welcome back to another Counterside video. This video will be about 8 common and uncommon mistakes most people make as a beginner, including me. I want to specify that, although I'm not an endgame player quite yet, I've gathered this info from friends as well as my Discord, link in the description, and members of the official Counterside Discord. Instead of giving a 1 minute video with generic advice, I'm going to explain all of these mistakes in depth and why you should not make them. If you think I missed anything, leave a comment down below with your advice so other people can see. 1. Using SSR dupes to limit break. When I first pulled a Gayun dupe, I immediately used it to limit break her. When I told this to someone who plays counterside, I think they died in the inside. The main reason to not do this is because of a system coming out in the future called rearms. So how does this system work? Here is an explanation from the counterside wiki. But first, what the heck is a rearm? If you play Arknights, it's similar to an alter version of a character except you can upgrade them with resources rather than pulling them. So it's like if you have Scatty and E2 her, but instead of just increasing her stats, her rearm turns her into Scatty alter. So here's how it works. To rearm someone, you need rearm data, and special rearm data, and quite a lot of it. You need 80 special rearm data to rearm an SSR, and to get this data, you need to sacrifice 4 other SSR gotcha employees. So instead of sacrificing SSR employees you've already built, you want ones to sacrifice that you won't care about. Your dupes. Why do you want to rearm, you ask? 1. They look super cool. 2. They're usually pretty cracked. 3. You can brag to all your friends. Another reason not to use dupes to limit break is that higher level dives require multiple teams, and sometimes you want to use the same character on different teams, so you can raise two copies of that character to use on separate teams. So just use APT cores to limit break. You can farm them every day in simulations and get a decent income of them from just playing the game. 2. Using Quartz to pull If you're free to play, you should be using your Quartz on important things like buying simulation tickets, which you get 2 of every day but you can buy 3 more of each with Quartz, and refreshing the Today's Deal shop maximum times and buying every item. Also, using quartz on pulls can be a waste because it is pretty easy to get employment contracts in this game, which you only use to pull on normal recruitment banners. 3. Enhancing and tuning lower tier gear. Tuning binaries and set binaries are very valuable because you can use them to change the stats of your high level gear. In the beginning of the game, you'll get a lot of low tier gear, for example, tier 3. Enhancing and tuning this gear is a huge waste of valuable resources because they are simply placeholders for the future when you get higher tier 6 and 7 gear from the challenge shop, gauntlet shop, and raid gear. 4. Doing salary negotiation rather than naturally leveling up characters. You get a ton of natural EXP from fights to level up characters. Doing salary negotiation is super expensive and wastes a lot of credits when you can just play levels to level up. Yes, you'll need a few characters at a certain level to beat the stages in the first place, but after that, don't do salary negotiation unless you need to level up a character urgently. You can spend your credits on today's deals, crafting, limit breaking, leveling skills, buying backgrounds, and more. 5. Missing daily simulations You'll want to do these simulations every day and at least buy one extra certificate of each with quartz because it's super cheap. Farming these are a great source of income for appraisals, training data, and APT cores, and they don't cost any Eternium. Just remember not to spend your appraisals. 6. Missing Side Stories You should definitely do side stories because you can get free SSR employees from them. Even though she is an SSS tier, I see a ton of people using Orca in PvE and PvP, so, and you can get her through this side story. 7. Pulling before you have 150 pulls Don't be duped by the 3.5% SSR rate. The gacha in this game is extremely painful. If you look at the rates on characters rate up banners, you only have a 1% chance of pulling them, which accounts for roughly 28.6% of SSRs. Also, there is no pity except hard pity, or guaranteed recruitment, at 150. On top of all of that, the insured recruitment doesn't carry over to other banners except for classified recruitment. So if you do 140 pulls on Sigma's banner and can't get to 150, that pity will disappear after her banner goes away. Based on my experience, expect to get a ton of SSRs, but not the one you want. So if you want a character really badly, 
you'll have to save up 150 pulls for them to guarantee you get them. 8. Using skip with high level units. I've actually been making this mistake until today, until my friend told me not to do this. You can still win all the battles if you skip with low level units, so you skip to level up all your low level units while you're farming. And that has been 8 mistakes not to make as a new counterside player. If you liked this video, leave a like down below for more counterside content. Let's go for 100 likes this video. Also, subscribing is the best way to support me, and YouTube told me if you don't hit the bell, you'll forget about my channel. Reminder that we're trying to hit 2k by the end of July. Once again, leave a comment if you think there are more mistakes people shouldn't make. Thanks for watching. Peace.